Hey guys, what is up? Dave here, coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel, and today's video is all about the Fall Guys leak. Recently, there was a leak of some files with a couple different games, actually, supposedly, on uh, Steam, where this folder was not supposed to ship with the game, but guess what? It did. So, what you're looking at here is the 2.7-ish gig download of Fall Guys with the folder from Steam that we're not supposed to see. So normally when you would get Fall Guys, you would see Easy Anti-Cheat, Fall Guys, Client Game Data, the EXEs, the Game Assembly DLL, the Install Script, this Crash Handler, and Unity Player. That's all you would see. Well, there's an extra folder. So before we go through that folder, let's go through the other ones in my standard file exploration because I've actually never played Fall Guys. I've seen videos of it. But I generally just don't really hop into new games unless they're sequels of games that I've played in the past, like Trackmania, for example, being a sequel to Trackmania United, Nations, and Sunrise, or sometimes Need for Speed, but I haven't even played the new ones. So let's check out Easy Anti Cheat. So Easy Anti Cheat is exactly what it sounds like it's an anti cheat to try to stop people from hacking the game. You're going to hear pauses from time to time because i got to take a sip of my monster because holy crap allergies. It feels like I have a sore throat and I will cough profusely suddenly at random if I don't take a sip. <coughs> but that's easy anti-cheat. Not much there of importance. Oh my god, hold on a second. Jesus Christ, I'm dying. Okay, I'm good now. I think I might be dying. And then there's your standard IL to CPP data. Here's your metadata if you want to try to dump it. Um, your plugins, your boot config, stream assets. Uh, then obviously you use this if you're going to dump it with IL to CPP decompiler or dumper, whatever. But let's get into the fun stuff. So first thing you'll see is this manage.7z, and then there's managed and IL to CPP output. I haven't actually opened up this file yet, but I imagine it's just this folder. <clears throat> and guess what? I was right. So we're going to open up DNSpy. I don't actually know what was open in here last, so this could be a real nice surprise. But as we can see here, there's Apple, Apple Core, Apple Macros, Assembly C -sharp .dll, which is very important, and all the other Unity 3D stuff that's usually very important. There's probably something to do with easy anti-cheat in here as well. What was I messing with last? Who knows? Something that deals with Photon Engine. Anyway, this is one of the most important DLLs when it comes to Unity 3D. So, if we open up that DLL in DNSpy, this actually lets us look at a lot of the code for Fall Guys. Now there's not a lot here obviously, we can see that right now. There's AI movement simple for just simple AI movement, but as you can see, when people say the source code leaked of Fall Guys, let me explain Unity 3D and IL to CPP. So like I was saying, this game normally ships as IL to CPP, which is why you get IL to CPP data, and you get this global metadata file, you get this folder versus old school Unity games. Let me find one real quick because I know I have one. Old school Unity games. Uh, I don't know if I actually have one. Come with this kind of stuff where it's just DLL files. These DLL files, you can actually just simply open them up just like this look at the code inside them, modify them, and put them back, and that mods the game. That's the simple way of modifying uh, Unity 3D games that are DLL based. If you're modifying an IL to CPP game, you have to then do it by dumping gameassembly.dll with the global metadata file selected with a tool called IL to CPP dumper. At that point, you actually, I should have left that folder open. At that point, you get files that look more like, uh, let's go with this. You get files that look more like this. So there's the IL to CPP. You get a dump.cs, 
which looks kind of like this. If you scroll through it, you get stuff like this, where you can see the offsets and like the variable names and stuff like that, but you don't actually get any code. You can get DLLs from IL to CPP dumped um, <coughs> files, excuse me. But again, they look like this. You don't get any code versus in the Fall Guys dump, you can see we have code, which is very important. Here's the easy anti cheat client service. Easy anti-cheat is actually already fairly simple to bypass. Um, it's something that even me, who has not really actually ever messed around with easy anti-cheat and bypassing it, I can tell you right now I see one bypass probably that would work on my screen. But again, you know, that's just how it goes. I see this line of code right here. Set allow online play. If you simply just set this to always be true, it might let you online anyway. I kind of doubt it's that easy, but in the grand scheme of things, that's basically what you're trying to do when it comes to bypassing an anti-cheat. But we have the entire code of the service right here. So we actually do have the ability, set allow online play, as you can see right here, we have the ability to go in and actually see exactly how this service is coded. And even for versions of the game to come, it's probably not going to change much because easy anti-cheat is easy anti-cheat. In the long run, they can change variables, they can change slightly how the functions are named, they can change how the functions are actually coded, but in the grand scheme of things, it's all gonna do the same thing as it does right now. So this gives people an eye on the actual code of how the anti-cheat works, which will then allow them to bypass it far more easily now and in the future. So that's already one big red flag with this source code leak. And then even still, you can just... The thing with DNSpy is when you modify the DLL files, I can just do... and then hit compile and it'll save this DLL and it'll modify it and then it'll always allow online play or at least try to. There's probably something that's going to stop me from doing that, but in the grand scheme of things, that's what you're trying to do. So let's look at some more code here. Game core manager, nothing there. Steam manager, just how the Steam API works and things like that. There are other sections of the code here that we can dig through. Player preferences, this is some important stuff right here, probably. I don't know what is enabled is for, but since we have the full source code in front of us, at least in some form, we can right click this and go to analyze. Check the get and see what it's used by, see if it's used double click it and it brings us to this. Now it doesn't show me what it's being used by, but I can see it now actually that it's read by a bunch of different functions. So again, that's what lets us dig through here and why the source code dump is very dangerous to people who don't want cheaters and hackers in their games. But that's not the only DLL file that's important. You may have noticed there's some custom ones like multiplayer guys, FG common is right here. This is gonna be the bulk code of the game that you wanna dig through. And you could, you know, here's this FPS counter. You can make this always show up on screen pretty easily, but that's kind of a pointless thing. There are probably things like platform manager, player preferences, player camera control could use player camera control to create some sort of fly hacks with the player camera because a lot of the time the way these games are coded a lot of things follow the player camera rather than the player model so if you move the player camera 
that could create a teleportation hack. For example, that's something we used to do back in uh, Combat Arms, is we figured out that the gun for your first person shooter 3D model, your gun actually followed the camera. So let's just do this. <clears throat> let's say I'm hiding behind a rock right here. The map is like right here going through it. This is ground, this is sky. Here, let's pretty sky ground mate. There we go. So this is the sky, this is the ground. Now there is another side of the map. Some of you who have played Comet Arms are going to be realizing here real quick, I'm drawing Kill Creek in a very poor way. On the other side, there was a little valley, but then on the other side over here, this is the other side of the valley. And because of it being a 3D plane and I could see across it, this was valley area. That's the valley area. Now over here, there would be some players that would hide like right here and right here. And then also we had a little ledge right here where we could hide just below and these people could barely see our heads. Especially if we like hid behind this rock and tried to snipe them. If so the gun for example would be tied to your player and it would be sticking out like right here towards these people and theirs would be sticking out towards you. What we figured out is this 3D model didn't matter. We used to be able to create something called a uh, virtual jump by modifying the player dimensions on the y-axis of the 3D models. And if you modified that y-axis to let's say from 40 to 200, as soon as you would crouch in the game, suddenly this player right here that's hiding behind this rock, let's say there's another player right here that's reloading their gun. But they have the Uh, crouch hacks I'm talking about where you can virtual jump let's say they suddenly hit spacebar and they jumped up they would suddenly jump up here and they would have full view of these guys hiding behind the ledge and could actually shoot down at them because the gun actually follows the player camera everybody sees the player model down here that's online but player camera is all client side so client side meaning controlled by your computer only so nobody would see this guy up here and he could shoot them plain as day and it would be like he's shooting through this rock but because the player camera follows uh or the gun follows the player camera he would be able to shoot these guys no problem and kill them nearly instantly when these guys might have been blocked by this ridge or their ridge so Using the player camera controller, you could probably do something very similar where it's like a virtual jump sort of thing and you could even change these max speeds of the camera movement. You could change if the game even detects you're in like a fly mode or not. There's a whole bunch of things you could do that would be very similar to what I was just drawing in paint. There's probably a ton of things that follow the camera rather than the model because the model can glitch out and suddenly you know, maybe it's on the other side of the map, but your player camera is still in normal play. It would be very dumb to code it by player model. Sometimes they do those still, so it would be a testing thing. There's probably some other stuff in here that's very dangerous. There's like the debug stuff is going to be in here, how to enable it and all that. Um, as you can see, let's see, is there any debug? Debug extensions. Currency definitions could be very dangerous if an item isn't equipable or not. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Here's C debug. So a bunch of debug code will be in here where it logs stuff to a text file somewhere on your computer. If there's a crash, give me one second. Ugh, this sucks. But there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do in here. Here's the events. There's Fall Guys debugging. Global debug is right here. Toggle the FPS counter if you want to. 
whole bunch of the other debugging stuff. Here's the client. There's probably, here's the network stuff, some network stuff. This probably works by, <coughs> I would assume, Photon Engine. Here's the levels. You know, you could probably modify Lava Controller and make it so Lava doesn't hurt you. I don't exactly know much about Fall Guys and all that, but here's more of the player save data. Ah, debuggers. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can probably do with this. Whole bunch of stuff. Figure out their API key, that's dangerous. Hopefully it reads it from some server, unlike Racing Rivals. Simply enable your debugging right here. Now, again, you know, I bring this up and you're like, but it's IELTS to CPP. What does that have to do with this multiplayer guys here we go what does this have to do with the fact that the actual game itself is IELTS to cpp like a lot of this doesn't actually matter well IELTS to cpp is open source i'm gonna kill creek i'm saving that drawing i'm proud of that give me one second so i'm gonna pull up something um and try to explain the IELTS to cpp portion here so I actually found this in a much easier way. I just looked at my Unity 3D install directory. Looky what I found, ILTCPP.exe. So, my cat's going crazy. Anyway, uh, D, CD, quote, paste, close. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of things you can do with IL2 CPP. Also, the code for IL2 CPP is open source. So as you can see here, you can come in here and see exactly how IL2 CPP is created, this exe. But once you come in here and you go into deploy, you can see that it gives you a whole bunch of command line uh, information for how to use IL to CPP to compile these DLLs into this C++. So this is a folder we hadn't opened yet. Now, what is this folder exactly? So this is the generated C++ code for IL to CPP stuff. If we open this up in Notepad++, <coughs> excuse me, we'll see a lot of the same data just slightly obfuscated. Right here, right in the code, this is assembly C -sharp .dll right here. That's a lot of the semi obfuscated code. If we scroll down to easy anti cheat, we see that that code is right here. And we can scroll through here, and yes, it is slightly obfuscated with some variables being like R, T1, T2. So you have to figure out what R actually is. But we have this. We literally have the assembly C -sharp .dll that we can open up and see the code plain as day right here in DN spy. So I'm looking at that easy anti cheat right now. Let's say debug set out. So if I look through here, <clears throat> as you can see, easy anti cheat dot client dot debug dummy writer is right here. And I can actually just go through and I can probably find the function no problem. It's right here. So I can go in and this is going to be, yeah, public static class debug. And I can just go through and I can figure out what this code converted to in C++ by comparing 
to the DLL files and figure out important information for possibly exploiting the game from there. From there, if you actually know how to use this command line properly, personally I do not. If you know how to use this command line properly, I bet there is somebody out there that knows enough about IELTS to CPP to use this to convert these to this and actually make the IELTS to CPP files to modify this game directly from these DLL files, which is the dream of most of us that do IELTS to CPP game modding. Most of the time when it comes to us doing IELTS to CPP game modding, I'll take that same game, No Limits, again. Most of the time when we're modding this stuff, we dump these files, we get these DLLs to at least have a nice map of how the stuff is created. But we still have to go in, we have to modify this .so file when it comes to mobile games at least. So the way we actually modify this file is in two, mainly two ways. I still do it kind of the old school way because I enjoy it more but I am learning some of the newer ways. So let's take this and this, and I'll show you guys how we normally mod this stuff. So we would open up this DLL and try to find something important in here. Let's say selected files, member. So there should be become member screen, room chat member entry already a member buy membership there is something that's going to be in here enable membership there's probably something in here as far as a boolean which means true or false that we can enable in order to suddenly uh, get is member this is what we want so we have to go through and basically dig through and yes we don't know we don't have any code for these things but as you can see right here we have is member so we would copy this offset go to our hex editor in hxd it's control g paste our offset and right here in these eight bytes those eight bytes we can modify to actually what it is now, 0100A0E31EFF2FE1, that sets it so the game always thinks you're a member. Whether you paid for a membership or not, you put this IL to CPP file back into the APK file, install the game on your phone, boom, you, are, you have all the benefits of being a member in No Limits Drag Racing. That's simple. That's normally how we mod IL to CPP games. The other way is with doing IL to CPP uh, menus, which let me find you an example real quick. So here is a popular open source menu for Android when it comes to making IL to CPP menus on mobile games. The LGL team puts out a lot of really good stuff, but if you wanna see how to make an IL to CPP menu, you have to understand how to do all this kind of stuff. So here's mod menu and main activity. Go in here, here's their floating mod menu. And you see, you have to go in, you have to code all this stuff to make a mod menu. Personally, I find this method very boring. <coughs> Which is very funny for me to say, because I used to do very similar things in combat arms. I'm not logged in, give me one second. I just realized I'm not logged in. So if we go through my repositories, you will see there's 1320 Forever, D3D Boxing Menu, 1320 Challenge Private Server, Unity Menu, Hack Shield Multi-Language Stuff. Let's go with the D3D Boxing Menu. So D3D9 was the popular way to make uh, in-game injectable mod menus, or as we called them back in the day by the proper term, hack menus, uh, for Combat Arms and other many other games. I mainly use this source code for one release on MPGH uh, called the Super Spawns hack. I think it was something like that. 
Super Spawns 2.0. Here we go. I'm known as Supercars on MPGH. I've never changed my username. This YouTube channel's dead. It's gone. It got deleted. <coughs> and, you know, I did a lot with making in game menus, and I actually, unfortunately, don't have any um, screenshots even of this menu working anymore, unfortunately. This was true, actually. My uh, keyboard was broken. I didn't have a print screen key. <laughs> but a menu like this was coded in a way like this. So if we go in here, you'll see I did a lot of similar things. And again, there was a lot of help from a lot of people in many different communities. I did a lot of the same thing, honestly. I would love to take one of these old D3D menus and convert them to work with IL to CPP, but I just don't know enough to do it. Now this one was more used for what was called my D3D hacks. D3D hacks are like wall hacks, uh, the ability to see through walls, anything that messes with DirectX uh, calls in the API, at least on PC games. So like I could draw a crosshair, I could do no smoke, chans, wall hack, <clears throat> menu name and all that. And the way that actually worked is through doing things like, uh, it's not in here. Oh, I must have deleted the features out of this. Oh well. So anyway, a lot of this stuff was very similar to how you do IL to CPP menus on Android now. But I did it for so long with Combat Arms, I find it boring on Android. But using a lot of this code, a lot of these DLLs that are leaked, in combination of these IL to CPP.exe uh, compiled tools, you could probably use the command line to compile these into an IL to CPP working project. Oops. Oh, I'm in the wrong folders. Hold on a minute. Games, Fall Guys, where is it? So you could actually use this compiler well converter to convert these dll files to the il to cpp output and then convert these to whatever the il to cpp file format is i don't exactly know how to do it i don't know what the correct command line stuff is because i've never done it but This leak is big because it's going to help hack creators bypass a whole bunch of stuff and find a whole bunch of new stuff. Don't listen to anybody that's trying to tell you, oh, this leak isn't a big deal. These files can't really be used. These files can be used, and that's being told to you by somebody who's been hacking Unity 3D games for six or seven years now. These files are important. It is bad that they leaked. This could lead to all sorts of different issues. I'm not saying that I'm 100% correct when it comes to compiling the DLLs to, or converting the DLLs to IL to CPP, but you do have full source code of the game. Just because it's not a Unity project you can direct import into Unity, just because it's not a solution file that you can open up right in Visual Studio, doesn't mean it's not important that it leaked, that it's a non-issue. It's a big issue, and it's going to result in people making more robust cheats for Fall Guys. So get ready, Fall Guys is probably gonna fall. Um, there's probably gonna be some really interesting hacks coming forth soon, and I, I will give it maybe a week. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys understand uh, everything here because people on Reddit made my head hurt. All the uneducated idiots who don't understand Unity 3D, Unity 3D modding, and IL to CPP and all that jazz that are supposedly saying their opinions on their wrong opinions. Let's get this straight. If you're stating your opinion is fact and it's incorrect, it's a wrong opinion. Um, it just made my head hurt and I wanted to still make the video about it because there's so much misinformation going around. So spread this video around. Uh, make sure people see it that do like Fall Guys, and oy, I'm going to be paying attention to the Fall Guys community because I want to see what kind of hacks come out. I 
I would put money on the line that something's going to come out from this, and I wouldn't be surprised even if there's a data leak of something of a larger proportion sometime in the future because of this leak. So I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Spread it around. I waited all the way until the end of the video to be a normal YouTuber. Give it a like because then it gets it into the algorithm and other people will see it. Subscribe if you want more. I'm trying to get back into making YouTube videos, but it's very hard with the weather suddenly being very nice. For those of you who don't know, I live in Ohio. We get like two and a half months of summer, and I'm going to enjoy it this year because I didn't get to last year. Talk to you later. Peace out.